Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of DC's Legends of Tomorrow. Another great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. This is a, a celebration episode. It's a fun episode. We're also pushing the plot forward, but it's just, it's just a celebration, just Legends of Tomorrow. I mean, seven seasons, this being episode 100, they've set this up, you've, like, even at the very end, like, the, the shot of everyone together, I'm, I'm skipping around a little bit, but that's been out there, and I saw that picture, I lost my mind, because I was like, it's the coolest thing, because, because this also stems from, like, once again, if you, uh, if you don't watch DC Fandom, they dropped it there, but you can still find it online, is, there's a video of, basically, Legends of Tomorrow, 100 episodes in 100 seconds, so, it's just the it this episode is just a celebration of everything and I like what how it was used uh to further Gideon's story too. Because obviously she's torn between like obviously Astro just treating her like she's just a computer, whereas Spooner is like, No, you're your own person, make your own decisions. So because Astra wants to steal a rhubarb pie, but it's like we can't because that's pertinent to history, but at the same time we have to be uh filled with food because if we don't we won't have the energy to save the legends and she's kind of split between the two and she's short circuits so Astra uses a spell that puts her and um Spooner inside of uh Gideon's head and there we meet Jax I'm like yeah familiar faces galore and I love it it's so awesome just like the trip down memory lane and I love that it's like wait are you British it's like no but for whatever reason Gideon wants to remember me this way which is funny uh um if you're unaware uh to anyone or may not remember the actor who plays Jax because I didn't know this until like because I saw commercials where he was like because they were doing like car promotional commercials and stuff like that that tied in I didn't realize that he is British he's putting in a he put on American accent to play Jax but um yeah, so it's just, it's kind of funny, just in the, in, uh, with the nature of the show, he gets to just, like, it, they just, make, just to be funny, they're making him use his natural accent, but yeah, he's leading them down, like, because the whole point is, they're trying to, like, a lot of Gideon's, like, memories have been, like, deleted and corrupted, so, like, they need to go to key memories, so, like, uh, an earlier one is her, it's, um, Sarah, Ray, Hawkman, and Captain Code. I love it. It's just like, and they're all like at each other's throats. And it's like, right. Remember when the legends didn't get along at all? I also love the conversation. Oh, what is, what's Sarah wearing? And it's like, oh yeah, her OG, um, her OG, uh, white canary suit. Uh, which is like, yeah, like the OG, OG one. Because, she, I mean, obviously she doesn't wear her white canary, like, um, outfit, like a lot. I am going to say outfit, but, um, uniform costume she doesn't wear it a lot uh i want to say looking at the previews i i was thinking it was that the case but i want to say season five's finale might be the last time she's worn it i don't remember i don't on the top of my head i can't i don't think she wore it any time last season i could be mistaken but i feel like season five's finale might be the last time she wore it um i mean a lot of them don't really like suit up like that it's super rare um for them all, all like suit up like that um but regardless, it was just, like, nice for them to just, like, oh, man, they're at each other's throats like that. That's so awesome. Um, oh, seeing Martin again. Oh, oh, because it's also a reminder of, like, because a lot of people on this team are dead. Like, we know, like, obviously Rip is gone. We know Martin is gone. We know um, Snart is gone. Granted, we've met different versions of Snart. Um there might be more with that later on, too, but, like, cause we met the Earth 50, was it Earth X version of, uh, Snart, um, where him and, uh, the Ray are engaged, are they, are they married? I think, they know, didn't they get engaged? They, they might be married, I don't remember, uh, but regardless, um, it's just, it's just, it fills you with nostalgia to see, it's like, it has, I mean, it hasn't even been that long since, like, Brandon Ralph, but, like, also see him, and then, like, see Courtney Ford at one point, like, walk into the yeah! it's just, it's so nice, uh, but obviously Gideon is remembering, um, the important things, because every memory she goes down in this episode is restoring, well, for one, it's Spooner and Astra's opportunity to meet a lot of the legends that they never got an opportunity to meet or cross paths with, um, I mean, because she didn't really get to know, know the team, but because even like Astra didn't really know, um, 
Ray or Nora, for example, because uh, by the time she joined the Legends, obviously they were going like she got to know Charlie a little bit, but obviously she never got to know Amaya, for example. So it's just, it's stuff like that. It's it's a sad thing of like sadly when you look at the episode, you realize like obviously they weren't able to get everybody, but they're able to get like what eighty five percent of just like all the Legends current current and past. So that but still it's the it. it yeah, it's kind of bummer we couldn't get everyone, but it's still kind of nice to be like be able to to be able to get what we got in general. It's pretty dope in its own right. So maybe it was probably too much of a last second situation, other obligations. Just you know, maybe people just weren't in a position to do it, or you know, you know, I'm, I'm not you know because other people might just have their other reasons, which isn't like to be like, oh, why didn't they do it? It's like no, like just there might be other reasons why, and that's you know that's their business. So I'm not you know, but regardless, I'm going um, down a whole tangent about it, but. You know, Gideon, you know, it, um, because I like that this is a journey about not just, um, it, it, at the card of it, it is Gideon's story about being a part of the legends and everything that they've, they've been through, their issues, them bumping heads. Because even love, it's like, you guys are legends and stuff like that. Rip was like, because it's also, it always will remind me to go back to why this show started in the first place. The legends were brought together on a lie that they were going to be the greatest team of superheroes and they became the greatest misfit team of superheroes. I don't, I don't know. Well, it's up there between them and Doom Patrol, like the greatest team of misfits. But they were like, he made it seem like they were the most important people. It's like, but no, Rip chose all of them because they were people that didn't matter to history. And in the end, they've proven themselves to be some of the most important people to history in, in a sense, you know? Um, but I love that whole conversation was about, no, there's a lab, only one bathroom. And once again, this is supposed to be like season one because Hawkman is there. This was obviously like those of us who remember, this was not the tone of the show. The show was like way more serious. It was jokey, but I mean, and maybe I have blinders on because I, I just distinctly remember season two into three is when it really like shifted gears and the show kind of became what it is where it's just like, they're like, ah, screw it. And just like did whatever. Like this show has been running wild since season three and I've loved every second of it. And so, but it's just like, yeah, those conversations, like maybe they were there in season one, but season one definitely was a lot more of a um, serious tone. And I even love Gideon's like, oh, I'd love to go to a, like, you know, she's like, oh, this is my first legend as a uh, mission as a legend. She's like, I wish it was kind of a Western, but this is fine too. It's like, yeah, there's been quite a few Western adventures along the way. I even love at one point she's like piloting the wave rider, trying to like go through her memories, to, like find like her, uh, they're heading to like her consciousness. And obviously we're seeing a lot of flash and memories. You're like, oh, I remember that. That was when they were at Woodstock. And then there's this, you see Constantine, you see this, you see that. You're like, oh, dude, it's so much. Oh, once again, it's, it's like that. It's that beautiful, amazing trip down memory lane. It just, once again, is just showing you just like how much the legends have grown. I mean, you also have to point out the fact that once again, looking at the fact is that uh, Sarah is the only OG left now, you know? It's still so fascinating that um, that it's come down, that, that this is where we are. And I think it's so interesting because, like, the crux of this story is about a virus that's corrupting Gideon. Um, it's making it so that it wants her to be reset. Uh, because it's like, right, like, the version of who you were, like, because she spent so much time with the Legends, they've influenced her too much, and now she's become too human-like, which obviously was what Astra wanted her to get wiped so she'd go back to be the computer, because it's like, right, once we do that, she could just help us find the Legends, but Spooner was against it, because I was like, no, we can't take away Gideon from being, like, we can't take away all these memories and let them be destroyed, like, we need to make sure Gideon's able to stay Gideon, because... You know, it, it's not right for us to, like, take away what makes her her. And that's what this is whole point is about because the AI system is like, no, you need to be um, – because your original programming was about maintaining history. But for Gideon – well, because the virus starts showing her all the stuff, like, you know, all the, the pain that has happened over the course of this series. Deaths like Snart's um, at one point, Hawkman's, or even, like – uh, bear rods like it's just the pain and like the legends and her herself have been through a lot of pain especially like with the bear rod situation it's like Zari like was drowning in her grief for hours and Gideon couldn't do anything for her. but there's a part of the programming that like prioritizes like right you need to kind of 
uh, focus, like, don't get so wrapped up in it. And it's like, I'm the one reason why you never felt any of that. Like, this programming is like, I'm the reason, I'm the computer side of things that kept you from becoming too human. But now it's like, now that you are human, you're feeling everything. It's like, you know, drowning all the bad stuff. And along the way, um, Spooner and A um, Astra are like, uh, taking on uh, pairings of the legends, um, uh, whether it's Bayrod and uh, Zari 2.0, or whether it's Nate and uh, uh, Zari 1.0, or uh, Ava and um, Sarah, but um, st stuff like that. Of, you know, getting them to be like, oh, like, reverting them to, like, good Gideon memories and be like, oh, Gideon's this way, you gotta go help her. But it's like, because Gideon was like, oh, like, the pain of it all. But it's because, despite the pain and everything, they taught her, like, how to become a person. Like, she's a part of this team. Like, they've made her better. She's, you know, changed and, you know, adapted. But then it turns out that this was a program that Rip, like, did to her against her will. Um, and initially it's kind of like, makes her kind of second guess everything, makes her think like, right, despite everything, I'm just, um, I'm just, uh, like all this is just a program. Like everything I'm feeling, all the changes I've made, all the adapting I've done, like, that's not really me. I'm not even the real me, but it doesn't matter. You know, Spooner's like, no, it doesn't matter what you are or what you were. Like you, she gets to decide who she wants to be. And then we start going down memory like because I one of the memories was like her, um, obviously like um, Jax didn't want to deal with it at the time, but obviously it's like uh, Martin being happy about being a grandfather and you're just like, man, ah, oh, it's just like it sucks that you know that he's gone, um, but like initially Ray he wanted Ray to sing with him, but he's like ah oh, we can't, but then um, Ray ended up. Well, no, then, like, Gideon sung with them. But it's like, yeah, despite everything, uh, they start, you know, going down the memory lane of, like, them at the party and stuff like that, celebrating. And I love that um, this is supposed to be, like, a... Well, it had, Nora was already with them, so it's, like, a season four, season five, like... It's probably, like, after season four of them celebrating and stuff like that, because they are odds there. So it's the alternate timeline thing. And I love the fact is that, like, yeah, Gary's like, yeah, you got it. Like, I forgot what he was... He was referencing eating a gingerbread. Like, oh, you got... When it comes to eating people, you have to eat them a certain way, and everyone's looking at him. He's like, obviously, I'm talking about gingerbread. It's like, oh, that's weird. Oh, Gary's weird. I'm like, oh, and how did we not know that Gary was an alien that loves... I love that they could go back and implement that. Like, oh, yeah, like... Granted, they didn't come up with that decision until later on, but they can retroactively add stuff to be like, oh man, it's been here the entire time, you just didn't know it. Like, obviously, those were like new scenes they filmed for this episode. But also, uh, the book club with, um, was it Zari? Um, with Zari, uh, I wouldn't say Ava and, um, Nora, and it's like, oh, like, Constantine using the jump ship to go back, uh, to, to the premiere of Harry Potter, he's like, oh, I was going to go meet some druids, but it went, he went back to see the premiere of Harry Potter, just like, moments like that, it's, it's just so good, and then, like, the karaoke situation is so awesome, but it's just like, it's just a reminder at the very end, and I like that, like, Gideon, um, doesn't destroy, like, the virus program. It's like, no, you're not just, like, a virus or anything. You're a part of me, you know, um, that we have to coexist because the fact of the matter is we're, we've changed, we're adapting, and all of that is part of what the legends have taught me, you know, and it's an important thing. So it's like, um, you know, we can coexist, but I will be taking the reins from now on. So she's not going to be so adherent to like yeah we're gonna i'm going to coexist with like the robot side of things but the humanity i've gained and grown i will uh let that steer me in the right direction you know and obviously everyone kind of like paps are along you know about like yes like it is hard sometimes like yeah things can be pretty rough and i think astra will understand that better than anyone because having to adjust to a hu regular human life yeah but it comes with its ups and its downs but at the end of it all it's worth it you know finding your way forward and as she's passing by like every member of the legends passes on that message to her and you know sarah at the end is like gideon 
welcome to the legends, you know, you've always been, but it's like, right, let's make it official, like, you know, you are just as much a part of this team as anyone else, you know, and it was just beautiful, and I just like, dude, it just made me so giddy, it's like, oh, the memories, it's so good, it's so good, that's, that's all this was, it's just like, it's just a feel-good episode of just, yeah, a progression for Gideon's story, but it's also, it's got its bright side, but, you know, and I think that's supposed to be the point, too, there is a bright side and dark side to everything, so, but obviously, like, her, Spooner, um, were able to escape, and it's like, right, now, let's go get something to eat, and then, obviously, off to save the legends. Um, because the whole point, too, is like, because especially the line from Rip of, like, let's go, but don't worry, you're not having to go alone, because every experience, good and bad, has helped forge her into who she is. I mean, that's, you know, we're all forged by, like, once again, the good and the bad, you know? And it can seem like it's sometimes like, oh, it sucks about the good, but you sadly can't have them without both because both influence and turn you. Gideon's who she is because of everything, every lesson lesson and um, thing, experience she's ever had with the legends, both good and bad, has forged her into who she is and, and has led her to this point right now. And I just think that's a beautiful thing. And um, they're kind of off together. But on the flip side of things, we have Bishop. When, we, when he popped up, I was like, whoa, we're getting more Bishop? That's crazy. I didn't expect that. That's so fascinating. And so it turns out he's giving his speech about, like, I guess the Ava clones. He's announcing them to the world. But he's getting glimpses of, like, the season six finale and his part to play in it, even though they wiped his memory. Usually those stick. I don't think there's ever typically. But I guess maybe... I was about to say, like, no, he hasn't. Mo he wasn't modified or anything at this point in time. So, like, why? I guess... Like it, maybe it wasn't fully powered up at the time, so like it only. I, I want maybe because I mean, he is like a genius, so maybe on some part of his brain, either someone did something to make it so it wouldn't, not like someone went back and fiddle with it so it wouldn't fully wipe his memory, or because do remember, like, when they had that, they couldn't use it in the premiere because it was drained, so maybe that's kind of supposed to be maybe there's supposed to be more to that but it turns out he remembers the past because he ends up running like he feels in his pocket and he found a code and it's Gideon's code and part of me is like the wave rider that destroyed their wave rider was the was it that Gideon like how did he get Gideon's code considering like Gideon and currently because that was in like what like wasn't it like 22,221 or something like that was the year uh, I don't, uh, it's, it's not like, tw uh, it's 2,200 something, I think, but aside from that, it's like, how, how would, because Gideon's currently human, so that must mean that at some point in time, she goes back to being, but it's like, we might be on alternate timelines, like, that's one timeline, but because Gideon's become human, it's sprawled off into another timeline, which, once again, kind of feeds a certain loop to avoid that future, because I'm starting, because at first I was like, could it be that Gideon's most likely the one behind the robots, uh, that we got introduced last to last to last episode. So as I write, we're not done with Bishop as a main antagonist. He's back. He was he was uh, neck deep in aliens last season. Now it's full blown robots. I wonder is that where his research is going to shift from? Like now it's uh, going to be all about robots replacing humanity or something like. That. I wonder is that what that's going to be? We'll, we'll see. Uh, because he's because I think for him he's getting revenge. Goes like oh they try to use me and wipe my memory. And it's like you're the bad guy in this but i guess like maybe because now now he remembers um what he did and so it's kind of sad knowing i guess this well because we don't this might be him later in that timeline so he might have shifted and become more like the bishop he was meant to like this because i don't remember what time they pulled him from this is this isn't the younger slightly younger version we met um in the season six finale of like when they went to get him to take down present day, day him and everything, but it's most likely like this is like years down the road. This for this bishop right now is him years down the road becoming a little bit closer to the bishop they had to deal with uh, present day and season six. So, but because he it's so maniacal for him to do something like that because he's all about destroying the legends. But it's because like right he probably is like oh my master plan was this to help the world and they thwarted it like he remembers now like. Right, and they use me, and they try to wipe my memory of it because they needed him to become the bad guy again because everything had to happen so they could, you know, once again, that same logic there, I think that's that was kind of, I'd actually kind of forgot about that for a second, but it's like, yeah, that's the same logic of why, of why I think everything's going down in season seven the way it is. So, 
but I wasn't expecting him to be at the heart of it. That Gideon will both be, you know, once again, I think that's the parallel. Like, this episode wasn't just meant to be a fun episode. It's also supposed to set up like, right, you have good Gideon present day, but Gideon being wiped and reset and becoming like evil Gideon um, in the future. So, um, which is also interesting to think about considering like, well, there's the Gideon in Star Labs that was... Um, cause there's, there's still like no clear, like, cause obviously it's, cause it's, cause the actress who voices Gideon on, um, I mean, it might be that type of thing of like the Tardises type of situation of like, right. It's just every, like different, uh, Time Lords have their, their own Tardises and like kind of almost like with their own personality. So like the one that initially Eobard had that he had in, um, Star Labs is a different like because they're probably it's probably like the Ava clones like how all the Ava clones are like different like the Gideons might be the same way because like obviously like the actress who voices Gideon and plays Gideon um, for Legends it doesn't do the voice for any time they use Gideon on the Flash so like showing that it is two distinct versions of Gideon at different points in time it's a whole thing but it's just crazy but it's like right let's uh. And we haven't, they haven't used that word in forever, anachronism, uh, anachronisms. So I guess that's exactly what the robots are meant to do. Like we are, I made the reference last episode. And I was like, oh, it, it's full blown Terminator. It's full blown Terminator. It's like, right, we got to go back. And the, the bad thing is the legends. They're, they're, they've disrupted time. And, but like, uh, you know, Gideon, because of her humanity has been very flexible about that. You know, what they've done, like they're bumbling their way through time, but also saving the world and saving the space-time continuum. Also playing their own role in helping save the multiverse. So, um, even when the, well, the entire multiverse, you know, was destroyed and wiped out by the Animoder and everything. But regardless, uh, it's just fascinating that we're here. I, just, I, I can't, I just, I'm just, I spent the entire time gushing. I do apologize, but it's just, it's just nice. It's just a reminder. Just like once I've said it time and time again, just imagine, look at the show first episode. Think how far we come from episode one to where we are now in the show. And that's just like, I don't know. It, it just makes me get in just like, man, this is, I, I just, I love this show so much. And just, this show is just so awesome. It's so much fun. And I'm, um, I'm just excited to see where the next episode ends up taking us going forward with all of this. Uh, but really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.